Greetings and salutations to you all once again. It is me, the Rabbit Inspector. Uh, I haven't put out a video in a little while now, and uh, I figured, well, what the hell, I'll go ahead and do a pickups video. The last time I did a pickups video was sometime back when I honestly can't remember when, and you'll have to forgive me. I think I've gathered everything together that I've gotten recently um, compared to the last time I did a pickups video, so I'm trying to do this as best as I can with everything that I think that I've got is new. There are some comics, there are some games, mostly games, and there are some movies just as well. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not counting digital games or anything here because you can't show those. Obviously, it's like, hey, look, this is my hard drive, and this is my list of games. Ain't that impressive? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a little jab there, the whole digital department thing, you know, which I do have digital games just as well, but you can't show those. You can't show them like you can't physical fucking copies like what I got here, which is something to look at and ogle over and drool over. Big fucking difference. I like digital games, but I mainly go for physical. You can't show phys you can't sh it's like let me hold up a fucking hard drive for you and wave it in your face. This is my digital game. If you want me to plug it in, there's the whole list. What are you showing? Fucking words. That's all you're showing. It's just words. It's just names. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. Got a little out of control there. Which is nothing new for this fucking channel. Um but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the games first. And I apologize if there is maybe some games in here that I did in the previous pickups video. I'm not necessarily sure. I went back and looked at it, and I'm like, I'm not looking through all this damn thing. I'm just going to use it to the best of my knowledge. So anyways, we'll start off first. I don't know if I did this one or not, but if I have, whatever, forgive me. And that is Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior is honestly a really awesome game. It's actually... Uh, um, a reboot of the series of a game that came out in the 90s, which was honestly pretty cool. It was like a, it was like a first person like Asian uh, style where you play as like a ninja named Lo Wang, kind of along the lines of like Duke Nukem or Doom or something like that. Has some really interesting humor. Has some really awesome action, you know, for that time period. And obviously, this is a reboot of the series, which I'm definitely excited for the second one. I'm more excited for the second one than I am of this first one because currently on this game. I'm stuck on a boss, <laughs> and it is pissing me the hell off. <laughs> it is really, really pissing me the hell off. Um, it's like I have to shoot certain little glowing orange orbs or something on his body, like his knees, knees, his knees or his elbows or whatever, to be able to take him down, and I'm kind of just frustrated with that, so I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to move to something else. But at some point, I'll get back to it <laughs> at some point in time, but I'm definitely going to get the second game without a shadow of a doubt. And obviously, recently, if you end up seeing one of my previous videos, I have and I have I, I cannot talk tonight. I'm sorry, it's very late. Um, I do have an Xbox One. I ended up getting an Xbox One, and I mainly got the Xbox One for exclusives and exclusives alone. It's my second console that I go to. My PS4 will be my main one, and I also have times while I game on the PC just as well. Um, but overall, it's just going to be for exclusives, unless there's a game that performs better on the Xbox One than it would on the PS4, the PC, or, or what have you. Um, that's the only time I'll probably go multi-platform with that. But overall, strictly exclusive, just like I did with the 360. But the first one is a game that I got. When I got the Xbox One, it was one of my number one titles that I wanted to pick up. And uh, obviously, Sunset Overdrive was one of the very, the very first ones. Um, and speaking of which, I think I honestly already talked to you guys about about these games. As a matter of fact, dealing and in a previous video of mine, I just realized that with the Xbox One, with the games that I ended up picking up for it, so I could actually just put those to the side. As a matter of fact, so if you want to, you can go check out that Xbox One video. I just remember that. Um, but yeah, what I was talking about about that first game for the Xbox One was dealing with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Just got I'm sick and tired of waiting for the PS for the PS4 release. I went ahead. I already got an Xbox One because I want to get exclusives. So I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and just get Rise of the Tomb Raider on there." So screw the PS4 version. <laughs> I'm not freaking dealing with it. We don't even have a release date for the damn thing yet. So fuck it, <laughs> just fuck it. Um, but uh, here's a, a PS3 game, and I've always wanted to get this one. For a long time now, of course, I'm a wrestling fan. You know, if you look at this channel, that's one of the things I discuss <laughs> kind of on rare occasions. You know, it's mainly gaming, but hey, I want to put all my other interests out there just as well. Um, but it's uh, WWE All-Stars. 
And these are the types of games that I want to come out more. I really want these games to come out more. Th this is the thing, man. WWE All-Stars, that over-the-top, arcadey, beat-em-up action. We need more games like this. This whole, this whole like, what is it, simulation deal or whatever that's going on with wrestling, that's all well, fine, and good if you're into that thing, but it bores the living shit out of me. I want stuff to go back to, to like, uh, to, what is it, um... WWE SmackDown, like back on the PS2, or I guess it was like WWE versus, uh, no, I mean it was like Raw versus SmackDown or something like that. They had Here Comes the Pain and Shut Your Mouth. Those were two of the greatest wrestling games on PS2. Just how people go and praise uh, WrestleMania 2000 and Wrestle uh, WWF No Mercy back on the N64. That's what that's the types of games that I want to come back. This whole simulation thing, it's like I, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. The new wrestling games nowadays are slow as shit. They are. I cannot stand it. It's like, oh, you level up as you go along. There's like 50 billion stats of things you have to level up, and the different types of points you get is really, really low. So when you're starting out, you're just getting the living shit kicked out of you when you end up actually creating a wrestler or something. I don't know about the main wrestlers themselves, but overall, I can't stand it, man. I just cannot get into these new wrestling games. I tried it once before with uh, WWE 13. Uh, back where CM Punk was on the cover, you know, with his straight edge thing that he had going on. Um, and I couldn't get into it. I just, I couldn't get into the new controls or anything like that. And it was, it was aggravating me and it was just slow and I was getting my ass kicked a lot. I said, the hell with this. And then last year, I think it was, it was either last year or the year before. I tried it one last time because there was something about it that interested me and I can't remember what it was for the life of me. But I finally said, Hell with it. I'm not dealing with these wrestling games anymore. As much as a wrestling fan as I am, I'm not dealing with these wrestling games anymore. If there isn't games that can come out, like the ones from the N64, and the ones, and because they sold gangbusters, man. They sold gangbusters. Especially going with the PS2 games. They were, they were amazing. They were great. All this slow simulation shit is just, you can like it if you want to. I freaking hate it. It bores me to the point where my brain goes numb. I want stuff that's more like this. Like say back, uh, that, like in the arcade, but it was I think it was like WrestleMania arcade or something like that. Over the top stuff, real goofy, and and like for example, you had Undertaker pulling out tombstones and slamming them over other wrestlers' heads for crying out loud. I mean, I don't really think that's in this, but it's really death, death defying and, and high stakes stuff. Like all their moves are way over the top. It's insane. It's it's nuts. It's crazy. You're going all over the place, all over the ring and the outside of the ring. That's the kind of stuff I want, you know. It's enough for the fact that I that I have to be in reality and watch wrestling for the fact of, obviously, it being in reality. But when it comes to the game itself, I want it to be more over the top. I want it to be more interesting. I want it to be more fun, you know. And this whole simulation thing that's going on is just, you can, I mean, people can have them, whatever. But have a company who's specifically going to put out those types of games for wrestling fans who love those the most, who want the heyday for when wrestling games, to me, were a hell of a lot better and a lot more fun. You know, I mean, because I got WrestleMania 2000 and WrestleMania, I mean, I keep saying WrestleMania, uh, WWF No Mercy, both of those on my N64, and I, I love them to death. You know, they're two of my favorite wrestling games. And I am going to plan to get uh, um, Here Comes a Pain and Shut Your Mouth. Um, plan on getting those again. Uh, I sold them years ago when I ended up, that's a long, that's a whole other story there. But, yeah, I definitely want to pick those up again. But, like, the prices now, especially on eBay and Amazon, it's probably close to the price that it was when it, rele was when it was released. Yeah, fuck that. I'll end up going to, like, garage sales or yard sales or something and go and check that out. Screw that crap. Or auctions, or not auctions, but, like, whatever. It sure as hell ain't going to be offline because, fuck you scalpers. Anyways, here's another one. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, scalpers. You're not getting my money. <laughs> but I definitely do want to get those other two wrestling games in my collection. And once again, fuck you, scalpers. Um, seriously, you want to charge somebody for a game forty fucking dollars for some? That's that was the damn price it was when it came out. Screw you. I'm not gonna pay any more than probably ten bucks. Period. Flat. That is the most that I would pay for it at all. Screw paying 44 or anything more than that. Screw that. Fuck it. Um, so actually, as a matter of fact, uh, July's uh, PS Plus free games that are coming out is actually one of these games. It's um, Get Out of Hell. Saints Row, um, 
yeah, Saints Row 4 reelected and got out of hell. I have Saints Row 4 on the PS3. Um, I have, I never played Got Out of Hell. I was, I was interested in it, but when I realized that the PS4 version was like really cheap, I think I got, I got this for like 12 to $15 or something like that. And I think like 12 to 15, like 15 bucks or something is just the price for Get Out of Hell. But it was coming with like the, the remastered version of Saints Row 4 and it was also having uh, Get Out of Hell in there. So I was like, fuck it, I definitely want to go ahead and give it a shot to play Saints Row 4 again, to try it all out again. But the main reason that I got it was for Get Out of Hell. So to get both of those together was, was really great. And and there's a <laughs> there's another game that's coming out, as a matter of fact, from from the developers of, of the Saints Row series, because I, I think it's called Agents of Mayhem or something. It has that Saints Row vibe. So I'm definitely interested to know exactly what the hell that's all about. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, oh, and... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I have a video review, as a matter of fact, of this movie, which is the Ratchet and Clank movie, as a matter of fact. I really liked it. Fuck the haters. I really do thought that it was an awesome movie, and I'm definitely going to end up buying it when it comes out on Blu-ray. Fuck the haters. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a great game. It's, uh, it's uh, basically like a reboot of the very first game, but it has tie-ins with the movie itself, which the movie is like that, too, in a way. It's, obviously, there's some things that's different about it, but it's mainly along the lines of, hey, this is basically like we're going back to our roots with a whole lot of extra stuff added in, and it's a really great game. I honestly haven't beaten it yet. I think I'm at, like, the last boss or something like that. I have a tendency to do that. It's just like there's some games you just don't want to end, but then there's some you want to finish to, to add, you know, put the fact that, oh, I finished this game. So, yeah. And here we got Legend of K Anniversary. This game was on PlayStation 2. I have it on PlayStation 2, which I just had the disc, and I got it, like, dirt cheap. Um, but this is the one, like, the remastered version uh, that's on PS4, and I just thought to myself, you know, I would definitely like to play this on PS4. And I got it for, like, really cheap, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to... And it is really awesome, and it does have... It definitely does have some new looks to it compared to the PS2 version. So I'm definitely having... Th this was actually... This was actually a hidden gem, to be quite honest, in terms of it being like a cartoony type of platformer, action platformer. It really is. It's really awesome. It's fun. The voice acting makes me want to, like, shoot a nail gun through my head. But other than that, you know, everything else in it is great. So if you could, <laughs> I tried to see if I could turn off the voice acting, and I, I don't know if I did or not. I don't know if you can. It would be great if you could, but obviously that's not necessarily the case. I don't think that they have to fuck it. Whatever. Um... Let me think real quick. Which is hard for me to do sometimes. You're out there, excuse me, I have a little bit of cold because fuck summer colds. Um, and allergies too for that matter. Um, let me think. God, I can't, I can't freaking remember. Did I get this? Did I not get this? Did I, what the hell am I doing? Okay, 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 okay. I already mentioned about the whole Xbox One thing. I mentioned about the Xbox One games and whatnot. Uh, you'll have to excuse me if I end up actually repeating myself with two of these titles, because I remember, can't remember if I showed them or not. I can't remember if I actually got them when I showed you the Xbox One. Anyways, here they are. It's uh, Rise and uh, Dead Rising 3. This is definitely an awesome game, but I realize I really have to level up some, because the first boss is a fucking prick, and I fucking hate him, and I'll be glad when I can actually defeat him, so I'm going to level up a whole lot, go back to the first chapter and just level up a lot, and then finally go ahead and try to just take his ass down, because he's annoying as shit. <sighs> Even on the easier mode, he's annoying as shit. Um... But anyways, and then here we go, we have Rise, Son of Rome, people have people have their hates about this, people have their likes about this, from what I know, the reviews were actually like, um, like Split or something like that, but I'm a person who loves Swords and Sandals movies, I love Swords and Sandals games, and I actually have a friend of mine that actually, when he started playing it, he just started playing it from beginning to end, all the way through one, sit, uh, one, one playthrough, and he loved it to death, he loved the story, he loved everything about it. Yeah, some of the gameplay in it can get a little repetitive, but I mean, the way that it looks and the way that it plays and all of that, sometimes, at least for me, I can kind of oversee things like that, and if it starts to get boring to me, I'll leave it and go to something else, and then I'll come back to that again, because I definitely want to see it all the way through to the end. I didn't show the back of this. I didn't know if you guys saw the back of that or not. Damn freaking lamp is like making it all shiny and shit. Well, you saw the front, but I don't know if you saw the back or not, or what the hell ever. Um, and oh yeah, I don't think I ever shown this game, but <coughs> this is <laughs> this is the game that actually has the highest views uh, that I pretty much just shit on because of the performance issues. 
There's one of my videos that I put out that has the highest views on my channel as of right now, and that's uh, Shit Them Battle Mage. I mean, Lich Them Battle Mage. I apologize. Well, I apologize. Me with the Pygmies in New Guinea, Amy. And, and uh, yeah, this is, um, I, they, they, like I mentioned, if you see my previous videos, they put out a patch. Everything is okay with it. It's a hell of a lot better now than it ever was before. That's for damn sure. And apparently they're supposed to release another one, so we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, I started to get into playing that. And it seems like it's just, it's, it's really cool. I'm, I'm honestly liking it. You know, I'm really trying to get used to how to rearrange spells and this and that and the other properly. But it's 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 playable now. It's a it's a hell of a lot better than what it was. That's for damn sure. Um, let's see. And we also have Borderlands, the handsome collection. And you know, the funny thing is, is I've never actually been a Borderlands fan per se, even though I'm really big into RPGs and all things like that. But the thing with that one is, is the fact that I was like, you know, I really want to try out the DLC. I really want to go ahead because I really want to try that whole Tiny Tina Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing, which I actually went to that at one point and I died because <laughs> I was only like level three or something like that. And I think you have to be like, I don't know, level uh, 13, 16, 26, something like that. I know that's a really large range there in terms of numbers, but you had to be somewhere within that range to be able to go ahead and, and get the, you know, to that DLC. But yeah, it's, um, I'm definitely liking it now. I'm liking it more, I guess, because of it having all that extra stuff in there and knowing that it also has the, uh, the, uh, pre-sequel in there as well, which I can't freaking stand moon jumping. I cannot stand that. I can't stand the whole oxygen thing. That's kind of one of the things that's holding me back from it right now because it just irks the shit out of me. But, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I've been playing through, uh, Borderlands 2 more so than I have with the pre-sequel, which I think a lot of people would end up saying the exact same thing. <laughs> And of course, I ended up doing a review on this because it is an amazing game, it is an amazing series, and you've already seen it because I was doing it like this. And that's Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. I'm not going to have any spoilers here, but the way that the game ended, there has got to be another game. I know not, I know, I know who, who not, not, God, I can't believe I, I forgot who the hell made that, that series, it's one of my favorite series. I know that they got to make another one, they just freaking have to, I mean... Obviously not anytime soon, and they said that this was the end of Nathan Drake's journey, but the way that it ended in this game, it has got to have, it has got to freaking have another another game without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, it could be 10 years from now, I don't know, but the way that it ended, I'm like, yes, this has to continue. It definitely has to. And of course, <laughs> the funny thing is, I haven't had my PS3 hooked up for a while, so I haven't had a chance to play this, but a lot of people shit on it. Some people actually liked it, but I got it for like four dollars or something and that's this yaiba ninja gaiden z a lot of people shit, <laughs> a lot of people shit on this dude they 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 really do but for four dollars seriously dude four dollars i'm definitely gonna give that damn thing a try and definitely get and definitely i can get i can shit even if i go through like one level or something or whatever that's four dollars right there worth my time um and of course, now considering the Xbox One plays 360 games, I'm looking for 360 games that I specifically want to play on there, which I may end up getting a 360 probably later down the road just to be able to play ex exclusives on there again because I'm kind of to that point where I'm like, Microsoft, if you don't have all of your everything, all of your freaking uh, like list of games on there for the 360, and you're just putting, you're just spitting out and pissing out a little few titles at a time. I may just want to go ahead and just like find a 360 and just get exclusives on there because apparently PS3 and 360 games right now are really cheap, especially the systems as well, depending on where you look at, knowing that they're last gen and all of that. But I, I played all the Gears of War games. I played one, two, and three, beat them all, loved them, and of course this one gets shit on a lot, which is Gear, Gears of War Judgment. And for, I've just played the very first part. I haven't really had a chance to seriously get into it or nothing like that. But from what I've played so far, you know, it has that Gears of War vibe. But I definitely want to go ahead and give it a shot for myself to, to see how it is. I mean, hell, I've played all the other ones and played them and beaten them and loved them. So might as well go ahead and give Judgment a shot. And I think I got Judgment for like... Uh, so, uh, four, five, six bucks, something like that. Got it, got it really cheap. Um... But anyways, oh, and these next two, these are the main two games that I'm playing as of right now. Well, minus PC, but that's digital, you know, so I can't show you anything with that. Um, but in terms of, like, actual physical content, uh, these are the two that I've been playing right now, so I'm going to go ahead and show them both to you. Both of these games get hate. Fuck the haters. Um, and I understand where their qualms lie 
But the fact is, when it comes to me, I honestly like these titles. I seriously do. From what I've been playing, I mean, hell, I ended up playing one of them like for an entire day, and like for maybe about for an entire day and a half. Not all at once, but just putting two days together. That had been like the main title that I had been playing before I switched over to the other one because I wanted to have a little bit of color in my life. Because <laughs> the other one really doesn't have too much color because it takes place on Mars. And no, it's not Doom. Which, by the way, did I show Doom to you guys at any point in time? Maybe I didn't. So, yeah, I got Doom. <laughs> Just the regular, ordinary case. I think I did. I don't know. Fuck it. Whatever. Great game. Um, but it's these two. It's uh, Star Ocean, um, Integrity and Faithlessness. Right there. It gets a lot of hate. Fuck the haters. And then there's a Technomancer. It's right there. Once again, fuck the haters. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've been playing the Technomancer uh, a lot more than I have been with Star Ocean, just for the simple fact that I obviously like that action RPG. I like being able to make my choices. I like having my choices matter. I like being having characters that actually are worth a damn. And, honestly, the storytelling in this is really awesome. Everything is really cool in it. You know, I can understand, like I mentioned before, where people's qualms lie with these games, but I don't understand what gamers want anymore. I, I, I just stopped trying to figure it out. You know, one of the complaints that I heard from a reviewer from IGN, no less, ended up saying that one of the problems with the game in, uh, Star, not, not the Technomancer, but Star Ocean, they said that there was a lack of cutscenes. So one of the complaints that we have in the gaming community nowadays is a game that has way too many cutscenes, and yet somebody is complaining about there not being enough cutscenes in the game. Well, here's a little history lesson. Going back to the Super Nintendo, and up until uh, the original PlayStation, I think what they were trying to do with that game was they weren't trying to have too many cutscenes because they were trying to give it that old school vibe like it was on the original PlayStation, like with Star Ocean, the second story, and back when it was on Super Nintendo. You know, I don't know why they didn't do that in there, but that shouldn't be a reason to just shit on the game because of that reason. You know, that, that was one of the things that just kind of got to me. I'm like, this is one of this is one of your cons as to the reason why you don't like the game, because there isn't enough cutscenes. Well, that is one of the things in the gaming community that everybody hates. The fact is, gamers don't know what the hell they want until they actually get it, so then they can go and complain about it, and then go get what they, what they wanted previously, and then they go and piss on that. And then they want something else, and then they get that, and they piss on that. You know, whatever. I just stopped trying to figure out anything dealing with the gaming community anymore. I'm like, fuck reviewers, fuck social justice warriors, fuck haters, whatever. You like what you like, you play what you play, and whatever. So, there you go. I bought both of these. I like them. So fuck the haters. They're great. And, if, and, and you know, guys, if you really want to give it a shot, go ahead and give them a shot. From my perspective, you won't regret it. And the Technomancer, the storytelling in it is great. The character development in it, to me, is great. You know, the voice acting can use a little bit of work. But even if you're going to wait for a sale with these games and wait till the price drops, still get them. They're still, they're still great games. So this is, this is a review that's coming from somebody who's trying to be positive about it, about two games that got shitted on by a lot of people. And, that, and that's both of these. And I could, like, you know, I haven't beaten them yet. I've gotten farther in Technomancer than I have with Star Ocean. But from everything that I played up until this point, I'm loving it. So, with that out of the way, there you go. So, damn, this is a long video. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but, okay, now we're going to go ahead and get to some movies. I'm just trying to zoom on through these. <laughs> of course, we got Star Wars The Force Awakens, right there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Obviously, it's like from the movie poster itself. Obviously, I had to get it because I, you know, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan or anything. I like some of the movies, but, and, you know, I, I appreciate it, what it's like done for nerdom, I guess you could say, and geeks and nerds and all of that. But overall, I mean, you know, it's it was an awesome movie. And yeah, like people say, oh, it was just like a retelling of the, of the first movie, the first old movie or whatever. Okay, fine. But look, we'll just have to see what happens when the second movie comes out. And I'm not talking about Rogue One. I'm talking about the next one in this whole trilogy thing. Uh, another one is London Has Fallen. Great freaking movie. Olympus Has Fallen is just as great. Go see it. And the same goes for London Has Fallen just as well. Go see that as well. I honestly thought that London was Fallen or London Has Fallen was better than Olympus Has Fallen, but just by a small margin. But both of them are the, both of them are great action movies, so definitely go check them out. And of course I got Deadpool. <laughs> Who'd have figured? <laughs> 
Yeah, obviously I got Deadpool. Great movie. Uh, saw it on Valentine's Day with my girlfriend. We both loved it. Great movie without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, it's uh, I really I, I really love uh, how how they brought his character to life and broke the fourth wall and all of that. Um, so that was uh, amazing. And this this movie's got a lot of hate, but I don't give a shit. It's still a great movie to me, you know, because like I said, fuck reviewers, fuck critics, fuck the haters, whatever. Go see what you want, go play what you want, and then just enjoy it, you know, because nobody's going to piss on my parade because I got a big-ass umbrella over me. Um, and, uh, and galoshes. And I'm getting the fuck out of the valley, away from all the piss-drenched bullshit that haters and critics try to spew on people. And that, and that movie is Gods of Egypt. And to me, when I ended up seeing this movie in theaters, I loved it. It felt honest to me. Honest, honest to me. Honest, honestly, honestly to me, it kind of felt like it was like a God of War set in Egypt. And a lot of people thought the new God of War was going to be set in Egypt. But there was talk about that, but that didn't happen. It's gone to Norse mythology. But it still would be awesome to see exactly what Kratos or whoever they would get in the God of War series to be in Egypt. I really do think it would be a great great thing to see, especially considering Assassin's Creed, uh, which is apparently coming out next year, um, or is it this year? It's next year. I think it's next year. Whatever. It's supposed to be dealing with Egypt, so it'd definitely be interesting to see what that is. So if you guys want a really over-the-top type of movie, which is just gorgeous to look at, and it's just a, a fun movie to watch, then definitely, definitely, uh, definitely go see it. Um, because fuck social justice warriors, fuck the politics surrounding it, fuck, just fuck it all. You know, if you want to go see it, then go see it. You know, it's your decision. It's your choice. Don't listen to what other people say. If something interests you, go for it. And fuck the haters. Um, and the next one I got here is The Hateful Eight. And honestly... <laughs> Like I, I like I, I don't like all of Quentin Tarantino's movies. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of all of his movies. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. Which I do have a few of them, and obviously The Hateful Eight is one of them. Long movie, but it was great because well, obviously it's Quentin Tarantino. But the thing is though is that it has that it has that vibe. It has that whole feel of it's um it's like it, it's character driven. Obviously, it's telling a story. Obvi obviously, but. The main thing is the characters behind it. It's the whole thing dealing with the characters and what and, and how they interact with each other and all of that. It's a character driven drama slash action slash comedy slash whatever. You know, even though the humor in it can be kind of rather dark, <laughs> you know, honestly, which it really depends on what your sense of humor is. But I know what my sense of humor is, and some of the things that I saw in there I wasn't laughing at <laughs> at all. I don't know if it was meant to be funny or not, but some of the things that I saw, I'm like, that shit ain't funny. That's fucked up. Um, but anyways, uh, and that's the way I see it. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go quickly here to some comics. There's a comic book uh, store that actually ended up, got I went into business like a few weeks ago, like about 30 minutes away from me. And so I'm finally going there now to check out uh, different types of new releases that they might have. They say they get new releases every Wednesday, so I want to go and check all that stuff out. So I'm kind of really getting more into graphic novels and comics now because my girlfriend's really into that. <coughs> And she was, I guess she was also wondering if I was ever going to kind of get into comics as well. And I finally, I've always read comics off and on, but I never fully got into them. So it, the way it is, it's going now. It's like she's getting much more into video games and I'm getting more into comics. So we're, she's really into comics. I'm really into video games, but now we're both getting more into the opposite things of, uh, of our nerddom, I guess you could say that we really liked. <laughs> So anyways, the the first one I got here, which I actually have the piece of plastic, which is kind of marking it off of where I last left off, is Mortal Kombat uh, Blood Island. This is Volume 3. I have the first two. There's nothing really big in terms of story dealing with this, honestly, you know, because it's Mortal Kombat, but the artwork and the action and everything in it is great. Uh, very gory, too, by the way. And um, Witchblade, which uh, is right here. It's actually a manga. I know I got a little piece of toilet paper there, which is actually holding it uh, where I last left off at. But yeah, this is... It, it, well, actually, I know you. I know in Japan they read from right to left, but they ended up switching this around for like the American version, and they have it going from left to right, and they actually ended up putting it in color. So I haven't even really had a chance to read that yet, but I've always been interested in the Witchblade series ever since I had been reading it since like way back when, whenever it you know first came out. What was it like in the mid to late nineties, late nineties, something like that? Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's uh, it's it's a manga too, so I definitely want to want to check it out for sure. Um, <clears throat> 
excuse me. And I also have a World of Warcraft one here. I just actually ended up finishing this one last night. Uh, last night, as a matter of fact, and it's a. Uh, the artwork in it is pretty. The story is mediocre. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and, and there's actually one of these comic series, it's a Dungeons and Dragons comic series that I'm kind of getting into, and honestly, there's a character in it that's really one of my favorites, it's actually the warrior, his name is Minx, and, uh, he has a little hamster, uh, called Boo that kind of always hangs out with him as well, he just has that, that, that warrior type of, you know, attitude that you would expect from, like, a Dungeons and Dragons type tabletop game or Dungeons and Dragons type story, you know, with, with his heroic type of talk, but he sounds like a complete idiot sometimes, too, and it's just hilarious. It's like one of the scenes I ended up seeing in this was like, he got pissed off at a fortune teller, he ended up breaking her table, and one of the reasons he'd done it was because he said, oh, she's wrong, and she also smells like cabbage. <laughs> Or something like that. You'd have to actually read it to to really get into it. But it's only the first issues right here, and it's called Shadows of the Shadows of the uh, the Vampire. That's the second one there. I don't necessarily know when the second one and the third one is going to really be coming out, but definitely, definitely some cool stuff. I wish the comics were actually a little bit thicker and a little bit a little bit longer because everything that's there just seems like it ends a little too soon for me. Um, so anyways, guys, that's a really long freaking video. Um, I just wanted to do some pickups that I had from here, and I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you guys have any discussions or anything, go ahead and leave them down below, and we'll have a little talk if you want to. And anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and end this now like I always do. <sighs> Later, taters. I love y'all. Adios.